the video I'm sharing today gives a real insight into the traditional music of this area of Appalachia. A few days ago, Paul and I had the great fortune to go spend some time with the Millsaps family of Graham, as they would say, Graham County, North Carolina, over in Robbinsville. Scott Millsaps, his brothers Carol and Craig were there, also their cousin Barry. They have a rich musical heritage, and we were able to pick and grin with them some, eat some wonderful food, fellowship with them, had a wonderful time. And then I also got Scott to tell us um, so that I could share with you his thoughts about the music and how it had shaped his life. I hope you enjoy this video. Well, I'll go ahead and get us started here. We're glad you all came. We really are. We've been wanting to do this for a long time. And, uh, uh, we want to lift up the name of Jesus while we're here and have a good time and just fellowship with one another in music. And uh, that's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. So we're going we're gonna to have a prayer here and get started. And sorry those girls can't make it, but we understand why. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So let's, let's have a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you again for this time together and that we can come and fellowship through music. And... Uh, how you bless us with music, Lord, and how you give us a universal language through music, Lord, and we can hear the notes and sing the songs and the words and play music, Lord, and how it, uh, we want to bring honor and glory to you because you, you created music, and we want to give it back to you, Lord, as a, as a sweet smell and aroma. We thank you again now for this time together. I pray for... Uh, for these girls, Lord, that are fixing to have these new babies coming into their lives and pray for the safety for the mama and the, the child, Lord, and that these children will be raised in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. To come to know you, that they'll make a difference in people's lives as they grow older. Lord, we thank you and praise you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, man and Blair. Get your mandolin out. Carry 
you through, he'll carry you through when you're in trouble. Jesus, 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 he'll carry you through, he'll carry you through. Sometimes I'm discouraged, my load's hard to bear. Then I feel myself stumble, neath my load of care. Then I ask him this question, oh my Lord, how long? And I hear his voice whisper, 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 soon you'll be coming home, soon you'll be coming home. Well, I need Jesus, and you need him too. Along life's highway to carry you through, he'll carry you through when you're in trouble. Don't know what to do. Call on Jesus, 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 he'll carry you through. All right, I was, uh, my name's Scott Millsaps, and I'm born and raised in, in Robbinsville, North Carolina, which is in Gra Gra Graham County. And uh, uh, music has been a part of my life for quite a few years. Uh, I was born into it, my dad played music, and, and my grandpa sang in the quartet, and my grandmother sang in the quartet, and my uh, uh, great uncle Barry's uh, father, uh, sang in a quartet and uh, called the Hardy Sharp Quartet and and I started learning music singing when I was uh, probably 10 or 11 years old and I would go to quartet practice with my dad and and they all knew the old shape note music and he started teaching me how to sing the bass line. I'll never forget we had a lady in our church that was, uh, was a, uh, a music teacher. She came in and led uh, music for kids in Sunday school. And uh, she went to my dad and said, uh, Your, Scott's got a problem. Said, uh, he can't sing with the rest of the kids. And and he said, what's up? And she said, he just can't sing, he's off key. And dad took me home and started working with me on it and found out that all the kids singing was a lot higher than I could sing. And he taught me how to sing an octave low. So I started learning how to sing then. But music has always been a strong part of my family and I love to do it. I have two other brothers that love music, sing. Uh, one of them plays, uh, plays the instruments. And uh, I don't know life without music. It has always been my love language in a lot of ways music has. And I've uh, sang in a quartet for about 35, 40 years. And uh, very small quartet. We didn't travel a lot other than the far western North Carolina. We did go to Tennessee and Georgia a few times, but uh, most of the time it's just local here, revivals and that kind of thing. But uh, having music in my home has been something that I've really wanted to do for a long time. I was raised in it. There was somebody in our home playing music or singing uh, about every weekend when I was growing up as a, as a young boy and a teenager. Uh, Barry and I played in a little bluegrass, golf, uh, bluegrass group uh, when we were younger and uh, uh, so learned to play a guitar, learned to play a bass and uh, it was just a great part of my life and dad always knew where I was at in my teenage years because we would be somebody's house playing music and he knew I wasn't out partying and running around doing all these crazy things so uh, anyway uh, I give my dad all credit for directed me in the path of music because it was something that I could relate to and uh, it just has given me a lot of blessings 
down through the year to be able to bless other people with what God has given me in music. And he asks us to give back to what he gives to, to us. And that's what I'm trying to do uh, in my life is give back what God's given me in the music world. So. That's, that's really great. Scott and his uh, lovely wife invited us over to their house. And we I feel like we've had prayer meeting almost. Had a good time. A really sweet spirit here. Lots of laughter and fun and good food and and beautiful, beautiful music. Mm -hmm. uh, we've really, really enjoyed it. Now, you said, mentioned the shape note stuff there. Mm -hmm. Well, I grew up in a musical family too. So all those things you talked about really hit home with me. But thinking about that, the shape note and, and just the style of music at your house, what was that like? Was it, um, was the shape note more like where they would have the singings at churches and things like that and lots of people would go and do that? Back Back in the 60s, 60s and 70s, uh, they had what they call convention singings. And uh, they would get these song books from Stamps Baxter or some other publishing company and they would take these songs and they would, uh, they would learn these songs. You had a leader in, 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 uh, in these music. It, was, it wasn't music schools, it was just music. Uh, getting together by churches, we'd get together and all your tenors and basses and altos and sopranos and they'd get in the choir and they'd take these new music songs, new music in these books and they would start picking good songs. The leaders would pick these songs out and they would start teaching them to everybody. And we started learning the tenors would have somebody in there, a strong tenor, basses, altos and leads and they'd learn these songs. So I learned a lot of different types of songs in these convention type songs. Uh, that's the way I learned to sing a lot of them. And as I progressed in my learning stage, my dad was a well-known, good quality singer and he started teaching me a lot of things about how to read music and how to follow sight read music. And so I started picking that up at a young age and uh, he kept telling me not to sing anything but bass. He said, don't worry about anything else. Sing only the bass line. So I, I hate that I didn't learn how to sing the tenor line and the alto line and the, the soprano line. As I got older, though, I started experimenting with those different parts and started trying to learn them a little bit. So uh, Primarily what instruments, when you think about instruments, of course at church you probably had piano. Piano and organ. Yeah, piano and, organ. and then... Uh, 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 a bass. Occasionally I would take my electric bass to church and special music or uh, Christmas or Easter, somebody would want to sing a song, we'd, I'd play the bass and we'd, my dad would play the guitar mm -hmm. and uh, we would, uh, but it was mainly piano and organ mm -hmm. in our and choir. for the quartet, what instruments? We used, a, my dad played the rhythm guitar and we had a bass player that played in that and we never did. We had, they did have a piano player at one time, but a few times they would go down through, they'd graduate and leave Robbinsville and go off to college and had to leave us without a piano player. But we went, we went probably about 20, 25 years without a piano player. And then dad started playing the guitar and we added a bass to that. And that's kind of the way we did work our harmonies out around the guitar instead of having a full band. When uh, you think about uh, Graham, Graham, as you would yeah. say, Graham, that's how you know if you're really from here, I guess. Um, what other musical influences was there? Like you mentioned, kind of the bluegrass band, so I'm guessing there's probably at least a man one in that, if not a banjo. Yes, uh, bluegrass was strong. My dad played bluegrass music. He played, uh, to take you back a little bit, he, he was one of the band, original band members of the Fontana Ramblers at Fontana back in the 50s and uh, uh, he was a really good rhythm guitar player and they played square dances and stuff and he started, he got out of that and started, uh, my grandfather died in 1964 and the quartet was named the bass singer so they had a few different people sing bass with them and finally uh, he was, they asked him to come and sing full time with the quartet and that's when he started changing his roots of music from from country music and bluegrass music into gospel music and uh, he loved that all he loved all kinds of music but I was raised more in the bluegrass world and the gospel music world 
uh, in church music, choir music, and that kind of thing. So uh, I just that was a big part of my life, learning learning different country music, Merle Haggard and Buck Coins and those kind of people. I listened to a lot because we had all the records and the Blue Bill Monroe and Lester Flad and Reno and Smiley and all those guys I listened to a whole lot growing up. So I had my ear for bluegrass music and then bluegrass gospel started coming on the scene with different groups like Bill Lawson and people like that and I really enjoyed starting hearing that. Bluegrass Cardinals, different groups, Marshall Family, people like that, that I love to hear them sing. I was more concentrated, possibly more on the vocals than I was the instrumentation at that time in my life, and still love vocals more. Uh, you mentioned since we'd come tonight, and uh, me and you've already been chatting, that this was something that, when you were younger, happened all the time. I have those same memories. I have, you know, falling asleep somewhere in a corner oh, yeah. while people was playing music, and running back and forth through the house with the kids playing those kind of things. But um, one of our mutual friends, Sonny Rickard, he told me about his, it was his grandmother but, and his grandparents, I can't remember on which side now, but um, they lived somewhere between here and Topton, I guess. Mm -hmm. And he talked about how they would have music, but it wasn't it, like you're saying, this, just like we're doing tonight, but it would become such a regular thing oh, yeah. that people would come, but even people that lived on the other side, they would walk along the railroad tracks and then they would stop and like, you know, kind of like camp out there where they could hear the music and then you just see them leave when it's over. Oh, yeah. they didn't even, so was those kind of like a, a, it turned into a community affair, was it, that the it, same? It did. I know we would go, my family, we would do a lot of camping when we were younger in uh, a local campground here in our community called Chill Point. And, we would go down to the campground in the summertime and of course dad would bring his guitar and, and uh, the quartet would come down and and uh, anybody that wanted to come could come and the campers would hear singing going on and they would start gathering up at our campsite and there'd be 25 or 30 people there around the campsite while we were singing and anybody could sing it wanted to. So uh, music was just a part of my everyday life. I didn't know life any different. and. And as I grew up and started dating and all this kind, I would date girls that, that were involved in music. So music has always been a drive in me, you know. Uh, talking about your brothers, they were here tonight and had that wonderful sibling uh, blood harmony, they call it. So I guess your dad had a play, played a role in that too, Very teaching much them so. their, like he taught you about the bass, taught them their parts too. He did, and uh, that was, what was really strange about growing up, I'm the oldest of the three, and as I was growing up, they were a lot younger. Well, he started working with me when I was 10, 11 years old, and teaching me the actual the bass line, you know, and stuff, and I started to learn to play the guitar when I was about, I was in the third grade, and he showed me three chords on the guitar, and I would, I was just, I'd listen to, Gospel music is something I listen to a lot. Records of the Statesman Quartet and the Blackwood Brothers and uh, those groups listen to a lot of those and uh, tried to imitate Big Chief, the bass singer, son of the Statesman, and he was one of my idols. Him and George Johnson with the Cathedrals and those kind of people I list quality, quality people that I tried to listen to as I grew up. And uh, my brothers started, they didn't really have a lot of interest in music till later on. Well, they were up in their teen years, and Dad started working with with both of them, teaching them the harmony parts and stuff. So, uh, my dad, I can give my dad a lot of credit for get, getting us involved, and in, he didn't push us. He did not push us. And as a teenage boy, you know that there's a lot of things that that attracts you besides music out there, ball and all that stuff. But I always tried to keep my balance with music and playing ball and dating and all that kind of thing. So uh, it was a natural thing. And then Craig and Carol came along and started singing. And it was probably 25 years ago. We'd never sung together much. Dad tried to get us when we was younger and we wouldn't do it. But we were camped out on the lake and uh, Ricky Skaggs had come out with a song, uh, Children Go, Where I Send Thee. And we'd bought the record, and uh, we'd been singing it ourselves. And he said, let's see if we can sing that. So we got around the 
crickets were chirping around, the jar flies and everything was chirping around the camp, and I've got a recording of it somewhere where we did our first singing together, and that's when we did it, and we sung Children Go, where I sing the a cappella. So, and then we started figuring, hey, we can, we might can sing a little bit, you know. So, but you were talking about that blood harmony, yeah, and I miss that. I miss it because I don't get to do it a little lot. With my dad, when I sung with my dad all those years, I had that that harmony right there in my ear. But after it was gone, it was gone, and I sure miss it. So. When uh, when you think about this will be my, I let you we're tired. I know we're both tired. I'll let you go after this. But when you think about the influence of music, like I, you know just the county over, but what, 45 minutes from here had kind of the same thing, then you had it, were different generations. But when you think about the influence of music on uh, Appalachia, Southern Appalachia, where we're from, thinking about North Georgia, East Tennessee, and Western North Carolina, um, you think that, I mean, I think what our experiences were fairly common. Very common. Yeah. It seems like there's music. You know, I think about myself, but then I also think about, well, my friend, that play, her mother played the piano, and that friend's daddy might have played the drums or something for a rock, you know, more of a rock band or something, but still there was music, it seemed like. It was always, a great influence. always music, always. There was something going on. I know my brother, Craig, he left here earlier tonight. Uh, he was kind of, he wasn't the wild child, but he was, he went in a little, little bit different direction. He was in the the rock music more than, than I was, or my brother Carol was, and he always wanted a set of drums for Christmas, and Mom and Dad wouldn't buy him any drums <laughs> for a long time, but they was afraid he would go out and play that old rock and roll music, <laughs> you know. But, uh, but yeah, music, the Appalachians, uh, being around it, being right, like my family, my family was music. My grandmother, my grandfather, uh, my great uncle, my aunt, great aunt, she played the piano for for that sharp quartet. Uh, so music has always been a part of my life, as long as I can remember. And going to those convention singings, it, I couldn't wait to go when they'd have the convention singings and, and get those new books and try to learn those new songs and stuff, you know. So I tried to go to every bluegrass festival I could go to growing up in the, in the 70s. I would go to drive to Livonia, Georgia and all these different places and Georgia Mountain Fair, I hit that a lot and uh, hearing all these different groups and I love, I was tendering more to the bluegrass gospel uh, in that area. I did, I, I did love bluegrass music but uh, I, I catered more to the bluegrass gospel I guess in that area and then veered out of that into more of the southern gospel world. Uh, Florida boys, cathedrals, statesmen, that type of, of, of music. But uh, it's always been, I always wanted to be a, a, a bass singer for, for a quartet that travel. That was my heart's desire, is to go on the road and sing. But God works in ways that, that protected me from doing that. And I, I'm so glad now that I never went down that road. I can stay here and do it because I love to do it instead of having to make money to do it and I didn't, that takes the fun out of it. And I'm so glad that I didn't, had the opportunity to, had the opportunity to go sing with the, the Chuck Wagon Gang one time. And I'm so glad I did because I probably wouldn't be the man today uh, that I am if, if I'd have gone on the road. So, thank God for our nature prayers.